brothers have been performing together since 1995. One of them is an acclaimed composer, has scored hundreds of songs for both film and TV, and has an Emmy for the Kennedys. The other has been in countless movies and has his own star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Today, we're chatting with Michael and Kevin Bacon of the Bacon Brothers. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out. How are you guys? Doing well. We're great. What has been the most exciting thing for you both that has happened on the tour so far? Well, we actually started it at the end of May, and we were out for almost a month, and we took two weeks off, and now we're back at it again. Uh, I guess it's always exciting when, you know, reconvening the band and getting in the bus and, you know, seeing all the little towns and venues and people all across the country. I love doing that. Has anything super exciting happened? A fan maybe uh, threw yeah. themselves on the <laughs> You're stage. For something even more exciting, right? <laughs> I think we're, any anecdotes. I don't know. Something um, is springing to mind. It's been really fun. I mean, there's been a lot of a lot of um, a lot of sellouts, so that's always good. And, nice. Um, people, um, you know, seem to be knowing the music a little bit, which is always something that that uh, is, we don't really expect, you know, because I've never, you know, having had any kind of hit songs, we. We don't expect anybody coming to a show to actually know any of our music. And it just seems like there's been a little bit more exposure this time. Well, now you're both out with your ninth album. Does that even seem possible to you? Yeah, it does, because we never really planned it. So um, it kind of the whole band really unrolled after just one gig, they say, 24, 25 years ago, that we did just as kind of a goof. And everything since then has sort of been rolling by his own steam and we kind of we're more i sort of feel like we're, we're more following the band than leading it and we're kind of used to that but the nice thing is that in both of our careers you know we're parts of teams that that you know i'm trying to write music to make whatever project i'm working on a success and kevin's acting in this in his in his uh roles with a lot of other actors to make the film a success but there are a lot of clients there are movie companies and and directors and producers, but in the band is really kind of, you know, the one thing that we totally control ourselves. And that's, that's a nice thing to have. Absolutely. Now you both though are in different parts of the industry and you say that it was a goof that this all happened. So tell us about that. You know, uh, we were making uh, demos of songs that we had written uh, with the hopes that they would be recorded by other artists, you know, um, or the possibility that maybe somebody would hear something and, 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 and put it in one of my films. We wrote a, a few songs that were kind of targeted to be in um, movies of mine. And uh, a friend of ours from, from Philly, where we're from, we're from Philadelphia, um, heard this demo and said, why don't you call yourself the Bacon Brothers and come down to Philly, and I'm going to uh, promote a show with you guys. And so we put the band together really just for that one gig. It was it was just kind of an idea that we figured we would try. Michael had been a you know a life lifetime musician and played in tons of bands. And I once you know for I had a short period of time where I was sitting in with him just playing percussion, backing him up. But we'd never really played as the Bacon Brothers and never really done our own songs. So what happened was we played the one show, and then. It was kind of fun, so we played another one, and people started to hear about it and calling up my brother and saying, hey, can you come up here? Can you come here and and play? And we also started writing more. And uh, once we started writing more, that kind of led to to the albums. Very, very cool. So did any of the songs that you anticipated to get into the movies, did they get into any of your movies? Pretty much not. We've had a couple, but overall, um, our our success rate is, is not what we would like to have. <laughs> but we're still trying well i'm sure something's going to happen you're out there you're out there enough so, right so yeah, now so. <laughs> you guys you grew up and you had there were six of you right six kids mm-hmm. now did you have different musical tastes from each other or did you both kind of like the same music uh i think our tastes you know are kind of similar in that we we like um uh we like great songs but the the age difference, um, I think, exposed Michael to a little bit slightly different um, music than than me, and um, you know, it, it's you know when you're a 
I guess when you're, uh, you know, different ages, you know, you're kind of listening to something that's more on the radio or then you kind of ex- expand and, and, and just, just that difference has, has made our taste, I think, slightly different. But we, 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 the one thread that's there is that we love great songs in, in kind of like any genre. Okay, and that that's where it brings me to the next question because your songs do seem like there's not one particular genre. Like Boys and Bars, it has kind of a light poppy song, I think, to it. And then when you guys were on Daryl's house and you sang Go My Way with Daryl, that was awesome, but it was a different sound. So do you guys label yourselves as having a genre? Well, the we Kevin made up an answer to that question about 25 years ago. When people would ask that, he'd say we are Foro Soko, folk rock, soul country, which at first was kind of a goof, but um, it really does kind of fit what we do. We go anywhere the song takes us, as opposed to a lot of bands would say, we're going to be a progressive rock band and we're going to write songs that are going to fit into that kind of sound. We really, when I go to a concert, I like to hear everything. I want to see people there everything they can possibly do and i guess when we put on our shows that's what we're trying to do as well so how often are you guys sitting down and actually writing music together and do you say hey listen we're gonna we're gonna take this weekend and we're gonna we're gonna write some stuff we don't really write much together anymore um and so you know we if 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 i do lead vocal then then i wrote it if mike does lead vocal then he wrote it um you know, we'll we'll comment on each other's songs, or you know, talk about ideas for arrangements or parts or or um, harmonies or you know. But basically, we write separately, and then we do um, home demos and share them share them with each other then, and then eventually share them with the band. Uh, and in terms of like how often, you know, writing is a weird thing because it's we're not the type of writers that can you know um, sit down you know, with a cup of coffee between 11 and, and 1 and, and every day and write songs. We, we kind of, both of us sort of have to wait for some kind of inspiration. So sometimes they come and sometimes they don't. Right. Now let's go into some personal stuff. You both have been married okay. f- for a long time, right? Michael, yeah. you've been married for 46 years. And Kevin, you've been married yeah. to Kira for 30 years. You're both in the entertainment industry. How have you both been able to have such long, successful marriages? I People do ask us that question. I haven't really come up with a very good exa- uh, you know, answer, except I guess you'd have to meet my wife. And, um, you know, there's something about her that she has, she has a very light touch. And uh, I'm not, I don't have a light touch. I'm kind of, I'm a darker kind of person and maybe opposite track and maybe... The fact that we see the world differently has uh, led us to get along really well and achieve a lot of really great things for ourselves and our family. And that's about the only answer I can come up with. Nice. For me, I think the secret to a long marriage is not to ask a movie star what the secret to a long marriage is. (laughs) (laughs) That's a better answer. So I had to ask it, though. I mean, because, you know, sure. people, I mean, people think I mean, about it. Look, I'm very proud. That, I mean, there aren't that many people who have been married. Uh, in fact, if you added up all the, the years of marriage of the guys in our band, I got it thousands of years. So um, I think, you know, I feel I'm very proud of that. And, uh, you know, it's not an easy thing to do. No. And let's talk about it. And re- like non-celebrities, people aren't married that long. So it's pretty impressive that you both be again, being in the entertainment industry and being married for as long as you have. It, it's very cool. Good, thanks. Now, do you take your wives on the road with you when you're out touring as the Bacon Brothers, or do they kind of stay and do their own thing? Well, you know, we're on a we're on a bus with nine guys uh, in bunks. Even better. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know, I know, my wife would would last about fifteen minutes on the bus. <laughs> um, so sometimes they'll fly and and meet us. I think I think Michael's wife. Uh, tends to tends to visit more. Um, she looks at our schedule and, and finds a place that she thinks looks like fun to go, and then she comes and and hangs out. And she's uh, you know Kira, Kira's you know she she comes every once in a while, but but she's often you know in L.A. or or you know busy with something. Right, right. Now, what do you guys do when you're not on the road? You're not working. What do you both like to do? Well, I like to sail. Um, 
Uh, I like to rollerblade. I like to go out to have dinner with my wife. And that's it's not much other than that. I'm trying to think. I always feel like I'm so busy all the time. But when someone asks me what I do in my free time, I can't really come up with a very good answer. For well, that. those are good, though. Sailing, eating, and being with your wife. It doesn't get better than that. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a good answer. Kevin, what do you like to do? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty similar, except not sailing. I mean, I, I, I spend, we like, you know, Kira and I like to, um, stay at home. We don't really like to travel that much. We like to stay at home. We like to, um, cook, uh, see our kids, see friends, hike. We love to hike. Um, uh, I like to, I like succulents. So I, you know, um, sometimes do these big, uh, kind of, um, succulent gardens, oh, wow. um, cactus, um, I sort of collect them and, uh, um, yeah, I like that. That's pretty cool. Now you both also in between of doing everything else, you like to give back now, six org. It's a charity that you run and the name comes from a board game, Kevin, that was made about you six degrees of Kevin Bacon. How did that turn into the very large organization that it is now? Well, you know, in, you know, quite a few years ago, I was kind of thinking about Paul Newman and about the way that he took his love of cooking and, and food and, you know, turned it into this, like, sort of uh, powerhouse of, of charity. Right. And, you know, I was kind of feeling like I wanted to do something like that. It was He was sort of inspirational to me in that way and that I was at a point in my life when I wanted to do a little bit more um, reaching outside of myself, um, you know, because being an actor can be a very self-involving thing. I think that, um, especially when I was, when I was young, I was, I was really all about, you know, being focused on me. And, um, so I was kind of thinking, you know, what, what do I have that, that could possibly be branded in that way? And it was this, this game. Uh, and then when I started to think about it, I thought, well, it's kind of a natural fit for, for a charity thing because the basic idea of the game is that we're all connected. Right. And to me, that's kind of a beautiful idea that the things that you do in your neighborhood affect people on the other side of the world. Um, and, uh, you know, we all have to ride this, this big, uh, planet together. And, um, so that's kind of the basis of, of, uh, of six degrees.org. Well, in a recent thing, I thought this was so cool. It just happened this last weekend, I guess. Um, you both surprised a man who was once homeless. He's a drummer. His name's Wendell. With the help of Pathways to Housing, an organization to help end homelessness. Tell us about what happened the other day with the both of you with this story. Well, listen, Michael, I can, I'll give you a more objective since I was sort of only peripherally involved. What we do when, we on the, when we're on the road um, and we have some time off, uh, which we did in Alexandria, Virginia last weekend, is they'll, Kevin's organization will um, convene a drop-in, which is kind of a surprise visit, and we bring the whole band with us and we play acoustically, and we just kind of go to a, a charity or, or an organization that's doing good and, and play and try to help them focus um, you know, some attention on what they're doing. And this particular organization is really cool because um, – this guy, Wendell, is that his name, Wendell? Yeah, he, um, they don't start, well, this is what you have to do for us to help you get housing. They go, we're going to get you housing first, and then we'll figure out how to help you get your life together. Okay. And their success rate apparently is 90%, wow. which I think is a pretty amazing, amazing statistic. So, yes. um, and it doesn't take us a lot of time. It's really fun. People are really appreciative. And it's really fun to just kind of pl- go up in a room and start playing with the guys in the band. It's really cool. They must have been blown away, though, <laughs> when you guys just showed up there and started playing. And that must have been totally heartwarming for both of you. It was great. It's, that's, that, you, you, know, you, you hit the nail on the head, which is that it's, not, it's, not, it's, it's, it's really fun for us. You know, we, get, we get a lot out of it. Well, yeah, because you're stepping outside of both of your boxes, really. Absolutely. Now you're both out. The guys in the band are great because they're they're willing to do it, and uh, it's, it's it's a really fun thing. You know, it's 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 certainly not a sacrifice; it's a reward. Absolutely, and and you're both so fortunate that you can give back on the degree that you do, and you're both out there yes, now 
promoting your new album and your new single, which is great, Tom Petty T-Shirt. We're going to be debuting it here. But going back to 2016, Kevin, you did this ridiculously funny skit on Jimmy Fallon called The First Draft of Free Fallen, and she really likes horses. Anyway, have either of you (laughs) had the chance to work with or meet Tom Petty? And what influenced you to write this particular song? Uh, I didn't, I'd never met Tom Petty. I never got a chance to uh, work with him. Um, I was hoping that he, he um, saw the, the, the Jimmy Fallon thing and didn't hate it too much only because, you know, I'm such a giant fan that, you know, when you, when you do a, uh, you know, a, a parody of somebody that you love so much, it's always a little scary, you know, that they're going to, you know, despise it. Um, but uh, the inspiration was just the idea that, you know, you, you know, I think guys have the instinct to want to, you know, fix everything. And, and that includes, um, you know, somebody who you're with and is, is struggling in, in some kind of way. And, um, you know, sometimes it, things can't be fixed. You know, so you just have to let them or or the thing you think is going to fix it is not the thing that's going to fix it. And so the idea was just a gesture like Tom Petty, you know, taking my Tom Petty T-shirt can be, you know, as profound as uh, words of wisdom. That's great. And I love it. And I know everybody, once they wrap their arms around this song, everyone's going to love it. And we really, really appreciate both of you for sharing everything that you talked about, everything that you did. And everybody can visit BaconBros.com for all kinds of cool things. Hopefully, though, you guys can get some more autographed CDs up there because they're completely sold out. And everybody can visit SixDegrees.org to help and find out all about the great things this organization does. And you can catch the Bacon Brothers at the Greenwich Odium on Friday, August 10th. Definitely a great show to check out. And thank you so, so much for both of you for being here. Thank Thank you. Thanks, Kiki. I appreciate your help. Excellent. Thanks for your help with the record. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. You guys have a great day. Hey, this is Michael Bacon from the Bacon Brothers. And this is Kevin Bacon. Check out our song, Tom Petty T-Shirt. 